Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Steve Herman, and if you're interested in any aspect of mediumship communication, doesn't matter if you're a professional or even if you've just been doing this a short time, there's something for you here on this YouTube channel. So definitely smack that subscribe button below if you haven't already subscribed. We're going to be getting into clear audience today. We're going to be getting into hearing the spirits, not just to receive mundane, superficial pieces of information, but how to receive names, how to receive precise facts. And I've talked about this before in a number of different videos that I have here on this channel, but it's something that comes up time and time again when I'm teaching. And with the pandemic, I've been teaching quite a few more online courses via Zoom. Although I was doing that before the pandemic, once the pandemic started, and my gosh, I've just been pretty busy and I'm certainly doing a lot of in-person groups as well, but it always comes up how to get that information very, very, very clearly. So I'm very involved with mediumship, which really is the focus of this YouTube channel. So I'm, I'm glad that you're here. I have two different books out on mediumship. I have Mediumship Mastery, The Ultimate Guide to Mechanics of Receiving Spirit Communication, available on Amazon. And I have a new book, Mediumship Mastery 2, advanced techniques that work. Both of these books are excellent and they're really designed not just for someone who's inquisitive or curious, but if you're really very much into the training aspect. So let's talk a little bit about this. How can we hear spirit stronger? How can we work with the spirit world? And when it comes to receiving information, I find that so often many students, even experienced mediums, they're intimidated when it comes to receiving names. And, and I'll do this with my students, you know, make them receive names. And it's interesting because you, you have people who are completely beginners and they'll get this very strongly. The names will come in. Of course, if you're familiar with the name, you know, a Mary or a John or a Robert, you know, from this background here in the States, it, it's, you're familiar with it. It's in your mind. It, it's going to be something that's going to be very relatively easy to receive what to speak of the unusual names. But if we go back within the history of mediumship and the religious movement of modern spiritualism, we see that there were a lot of very proficient channels or vehicles to the world of spirit who received this type of information, very precise, detailed, not just names, but addresses, street addresses and phone numbers, data such as this, which you might think, well, what's the point of all that? Well, the point of it all is that it, beyond a matter of a doubt, solidly demonstrates evidence of the continuity of life. So someone who's the recipient of that, it, it can deeply touch and affect them profoundly on an inner level. It can literally change their life around but if we look back at some of the pioneers of mediumship who really worked as exponents for the spirit world, they received this type of information. How many of you are familiar with George Cutter? Now, he was based in Boston. And I remember many years ago, I was at Freeville Spiritualist Camp in central New York State. And I went through all their old programs, going back when they first started started out as a camp in the mid-1890s, all the way up to the present. So it's at least a hundred years or so worth of programs. And I was just going through, because I'm into the history, and I noticed starting around the turn of the century, all the way up for quite a few years, I saw the name George Cutter. And then I was serving at the spiritualist camp up in Maine. Then I remember looking through some of the old programs and I saw the name George Cutter. And George Cutter was clairaudient. You know, you would have a blackboard, right? Chalk, right there on the platform when he demonstrated mediumship. So he would receive the first name, the middle name, and the last name. And he would write it out on the blackboard. How many of you are able to do that? And if you say, I can't do that, why can't you do it? It has to do with how the spirit world works with you. And we can do our part. We can actually improve that. Harry Malasi was another medium. And he was actually based 
in Boston for quite a long time, passed over in 1971. And he was amazing as a medium. Or was it 1970? There's a fountain that's dedicated to him at Lilydale in New York. Amazing medium. Now, when he would work, he literally would see the names of the spirit communicators written backwards over the heads of the recipient of the communication. So he must have been a bit dyslexic, isn't it? You know, you get the information this way, but it's unique for each person. But the point I'm trying to make is that they can give you very, very precise information. So oftentimes when I'm working with my students, and when I'm working with individuals, even you know, one -on, whether it's one-on-one -on -one individualized training or working with a group, I'll have them pause. You know, there's an attunement, there's this link that they've made with the communicator. And when we do that, we, we, we give space for the communicator to put the information into our head, to impress our minds. And they'll impress your mind with names. They'll impress your mind with precise information. Years ago, I used to tell my students, study a phone book. Pick up the phone book. You know, whole sections. And we're talking about the white pages, of course. And it was all alphabetical, you know, go over all these different names, right? The last names, not just the first names, but familiarize yourself with the surname, the last name of the individuals. Why? Because then it's in your head. And they'll give you the names of people, but they will also give you names of places. It might even be the name of the individual in the spirit world's boat. Or sometimes they had a vacation cottage somewhere, you know, they have the name written over the door, right on the front porch, might be the name of a pet. You could have a name of a place, you know, not just North America or Europe or a country, but literally names of towns, small villages, counties, streets, providences. There's no limit to what the spirit world can do through you. Mary Pepper Vanderbilt was another very prominent American medium. And in 1906, she was invited by the Tsar Nicholas of Russia, the Tsar of Russia, to hold seances in the royal palace. So she, so she, she worked in Europe, and she's very well known. She ran a spiritualist church in <clears throat> Brooklyn, New York, precise information would come through. Her, her main control was Bright Eyes, who was native, a little Native American child who had passed over <clears throat> from disease. But profound, strong evidence. She was also the president of the spiritualist camp at Lake Pleasant and the spiritualist camp up in uh, Etna, Maine, Lake Pleasant, Massachusetts and Etna, Maine, in, in the same period. And she passed during the pandemic of 1890. Of, 18, of 1918, 1919, she passed the spirit world uh, from, from, from the Spanish flu. But amazing medium. But if you watch and observe, different people work differently. And how they work with you is different. They're going to use your strengths because they want to expedite the process. However, you can do so much to enhance this. You know, sometimes people go, well, my gosh, how can I get information? How can they tell me things that no one else knows? Well, they can tell you this type of stuff. They want to tell you those types of things. A lot of times mediums are comfortable receiving things in image form, that they receive things symbolically. Oftentimes, as they translate or interpret the information, over a period of time, you know, they're going to learn how to do it very well. But... Working visually is just one aspect of mediumship. And, and as not, many people who are novice, that's, that's the approach. But with any image, there's the clairsentience. But then there's also the mental impression of words, right? The clairaudience, the hearing, the sound from the world of spirit. So whole sentences can be conveyed. And you can learn how to receive those whole sentences. Sometimes it's just a word or two or a phrase. But that short phrase can be highly significant when it pertains to 
the individual coming through us, the, the spirit communicator. It can be extremely evidential. So when we, we, we talk about communications, they can literally give you, you know, whole sentences, maybe the exact conversation that they had with the recipient, their loved one. You know, the grandmother's coming through, talking to her grandson or granddaughter, the exact conversation right before she kicked the bucket and left her physical body to the world of spirit. Now, they can give you foreign languages. They can give you phrases, and you don't know what you're saying. But you have to allow yourself to pause, and you have to allow yourself to vocalize what you're hearing. And, you know, when we, we connect to the spirit world, sometimes the words that we will hear initially, it's almost like they're in another room. They seem a bit uh, muffled or covered over or indistinct. And yet, your spirit helpers will literally turn up the volume and you will hear the words, you will hear the sentences, and you'll receive names. Now you can receive names, just like Harry Malaysi. He saw the names written over the person's head with the letters backwards, like reverse looking to a mirror. Another British medium, when she used to work, she saw just the names written up almost like, like, with, like stars or in lights. Just like if you go to Broadway, you know, sometimes they have different words that are written in, in these star-type letters, in neon, neon signs, so to speak. Same type of way. The spirit world is not limited to one approach, but it's up to you as a medium to stretch what you're doing, to expand what you're doing, and don't get stuck in a box. Don't become rigid. Don't start thinking that you're so wonderful with what you're doing. Don't compare yourself to other mediums. It's such a blessing to work with the world of spirit. It is such an opportunity to help others and to reach them with the light of the Spirit. Sometimes people can get really into it and they can lose that. You know, they want to improve, they want to be better than everyone else, this kind of thing. Don't worry about that. Do the best you can and know that if you're putting energy into it, your Spirit helpers will put so much effort into getting closer to you and working with you. So I hope that what I've spoken about just now gives you some ideas on what to work on within your own mediumship. You know, feel free, you know, definitely subscribe, smack that subscription button if you haven't already. You know, check out my books, on Amazon, Mediumship Mastery. And definitely, you know, I have a lot of different groups going on all the time and one-on-one -on -one training. But if you have any questions, you know, put your comments below or get hold of me. So thank you so much for watching this video and God bless you.